Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Lord, you welcome us when we are weak in faith. Uphold your church throughout the world. Make it a place of welcome. Strengthen faith through Bible studies, Sunday school, confirmation, and youth ministries. Nurture new ministries of education and growth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The height of the heavens show us the vastness of your steadfast love. Have compassion on your creation. Where human selfishness has brought ruin and destruction, we look to you to heal, renew, and redeem your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your ways known to the nations. Speak kindness to our bitter grudges. Settle our hearts when we want to settle accounts with violence. Bless our leaders with patience and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bringing healing and justice wherever harm is dealt. Provide vindication for all who are oppressed. Free victims of human trafficking and forced labor. Deliver all who are bound by debt. Feed all who hunger and guard refugees fleeing famine, poverty, and war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. Still our tongues when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Make this congregation a community of mercy for one another and for all our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Whether we live or whether we die, we are yours. We thank you for those who have showed faithfulness, for the knees that have taught us to bow to you and the tongues that taught us to praise you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all these things and whatever else you might see that we need, we entrust to your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good evening. I pray that this evening finds you well. All of our readings this week have to do with um, something to do with forgiveness, it seems. The psalm is Psalm 103, verses 1 through 13. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? Who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. This is such an amazing example of both how much God loves us and forgives us. And also I think for us to think about how forgiving we should be. As I read this and realize just how much God has forgiven me, it helps encourage me and makes me think how much I should be forgiving others and how much I'm not. And how much, I'm mean, just how amazing our God is and, and forgiving. Um, the first reading is from Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 through 21. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's, Joseph's brothers said, 
What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of God your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to him, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I will provide you and I will provide for you and your little ones. In this way he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. This so this is the story of Joseph, if you know the story of Joseph and the amazing Technicolor dream coat. And at the end of his life, so earlier in his life, his brothers had all thrown him in a pit and sent him off um to slavery or to die or I mean nothing good. They they intended harm for him. And now at, at later in life, um the father of all of the brothers, including Joseph, has died. And um they're afraid now. Like they, they were afraid that you know, Joseph forgave them because their dad was there, but now their dad isn't there. And um, I I think this is such a great example of forgiveness because you have other stories of forgiveness, but this is within the family, which, you know, in the family or in those close personal relationships you have with people, sometimes those are the hardest times to forgive someone because you have to continue to interact with them. It's not like you can forgive the person and move on and maybe never see them again and never have to face that again. But in the, like Joseph having to forgive his family and his brothers, he has to interact with them and, and deal with that every day of his life. So I think of this as maybe one of the best examples of forgiveness um, in the Bible that Joseph really did forgive his brothers. And I'm sure it wasn't easy for him um, you know, he had to interact with his brothers the rest of his life, to some degree at least. So um, that really speaks to me to think about forgiveness in the sense of um, how hard forgiveness really is. Um, and then the Romans reading today is from chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak only eat vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in the honor of the Lord. Those who eat, eat in the honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live nor or, or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the living and the dead. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall praise God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. This Romans passage really gets to me because it reminds me that I have no place judging others. None of us have place judging others. God takes all of the takes care of all the judgment that needs taken care of. Um, and then too, I was just thinking, um, you know, sometimes we work towards just tolerating each other, and when maybe we should be working on loving and welcoming each other as well. You know, in the, in the sense of that, tolerating someone is important. More important, you know, it, tolerating is better than returning evil to someone or something like that. But really we are called to love and welcome everyone, our neighbor, those that we get along with and those that we don't. And that's such a hard thing and yet so important. Um, and 
And I keep thinking for myself and for all of us, what makes us better than those that we manage to just tolerate? Because I'm no better than anybody else. And I think that that's what that Romans passage is really getting at. And finally, um, our gospel reading for the weekend, Matthew 18. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the f slave fell on the knee before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of the slave released him and forgave him the debt. But the same slave went out and came upon his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused and he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw that what had happened, they were all the slaves were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their Lord what had taken place. Then this Lord summoned him and said, you wicked slave, I forgave all of your debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. So maybe first a thought for any kids watching or anyone young at heart. Um, I was thinking about, it says to forgive someone 77 times. And that's a lot. I, I mean, it's not a huge number. You know, it's not a hundred or a thousand or a million, but 77 is a lot. So I'm wondering if there's something that you like to do or you're good at. Um, maybe it's doing cartwheels. Maybe it's um, jumping rope. Um, maybe it's riding your bike around the block, something like that. And I challenge you after you watch this, and I mean for any of us, to try and, try and do something that we enjoy and find ourselves good at doing 77 times. See if you can do that. I mean, some things might be easier. If you pick push-ups, 77 push-ups seems a lot easier than 77 something else is. I don't know. Riding your bike 77 miles. But um, just that idea of thinking how big 77 is. And um, and so, yeah, so kids remember that. And um, then remember how many times we're supposed to forgive each other and how often God forgives us. Because I know God forgives me more than 77 times in my life. Probably more than 77 times in a week even. Um, and I think I think in this, the reason that um, 77 is named, I mean, maybe it's just some random number. But I think it's it, if it is a random number, it gives you the idea of going beyond keeping tabs on something. You know, if, if you're called to forgive somebody seven times or ten times... Maybe you could keep track of that, you know, and you keep a little counter sheet and you say that person sinned against me this many times or I've forgiven them this many times. But 77 is at the point where it's beyond forgiveness. Um, and so I think that that's kind of the point there. And then, you know, as, as we move on and in the second part of the gospel lesson, it, it talks about this person who has had this huge debt that's been forgiven. And then he has somebody who owes him something much less. I mean, a debt, but not that big. And he's not willing to forgive that person. And it, I think in our lives, it just makes me think, what keeps us from being compassionate and merciful to others when we've received so much? I, God has given us forgiveness, eternal life. I mean, everything that we have, we can thank God for. And so what keeps each of us from looking to our neighbor and forgiving them for little things uh, relatively um, that they need forgiveness for. Now, I know the ability to forgive does not come easy and it's not a quick process, which in fact, it is a process then. It's not just a matter of checking off a box that 
you have to forgive someone and you've done that and you can click that little box and move on with your life. I think that true forgiveness is a process that sometimes, you know, you circle back and have to reassess and continue with. Um, but I find comfort in remembering that God forgives me and each of us more than 77 times in a day, probably. And so because God forgives us, we are called by God to forgive others. And I, I think too, there's a, a, maybe not a huge part, but I think it's important to remember to forgive ourselves too. Like when we need to for, have forgiveness for ourselves, we need to repeatedly forgive ourselves as well. Um, and yeah, so as you live your life this week, think about how many times you forgive someone or, or your total number of forgivenesses you've forgotten, if that makes sense. I wonder if it will be more than 77 times in a week. And with that, um, we move into a time of prayer this evening. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Lord, you welcome us when we are weak in faith. Uphold your church throughout the world. Make it a place of welcome. Strengthen faith through Bible studies, Sunday school, confirmation, and youth ministries. Nurture new ministries of education and growth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The height of the heavens show us the vastness of your steadfast love. Have compassion on your creation. Where human selfishness has brought ruin and destruction, we look to you to heal, renew, and redeem your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your ways known to the nations. Speak kindness to our bitter grudges. Settle our hearts when we want to settle accounts with violence. Bless our leaders with patience and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bringing healing and justice wherever harm is dealt. Provide vindication for all who are oppressed. Free victims of human trafficking and forced labor. Deliver all who are bound by debt. Feed all who hunger and guard refugees fleeing famine, poverty, and war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. Still our tongues when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Make this congregation a community of mercy for one another and for all our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Whether we live or whether we die, we are yours. We thank you for those who have showed faithfulness, for the knees that have taught us to bow to you and the tongues that taught us to praise you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all these things and whatever else you might see that we need, we entrust to your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. Who was conceived by the power, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. And the communion of saints. For the forgiveness of sins. The resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. 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 To pray. Our Father. Father. Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 